Number 10, a square pyramid base 30mm, axis length 60mm is held by one of its base corners such that the vertex touches the ground. Draw its projections. So let's take our reference line. It's a square pyramid freely held by one of its corner. So let's take the square pyramid in corner position. Square pyramid in corner position has to be drawn such a way that the line joining the corner and the center of the plane has to be parallel to x, y. So let's uh, just draw one 45 degree line. We just draw a 45 degree line through this point. The base distance is given as 30 mm. We just take 30 mm on this line. It's 10, 20, 30. So we have this 30 mm. So we can just uh, find the square pyramid. We can just duplicate this square pyramid. I just project this. I project this. You can get this distance. on the right hand side also similarly we can take this height and place it on the bottom as well so we are getting a square pyramid in corner position when we join with uh, the center and the corner by a line it should be strictly parallel to x by 9 so this is the corner position so we connect to this So we have the square pyramid. Square goes like this. We have the other two points also. Then we have this corner also needs to be joined. And first we can just project this and get the front view. Project this. This can be projected to the ground. X Y line. And similarly we project this to the xy line and we have 60 mm height the height of the pyramid is 60 mm so therefore we can mark that height 60 mm somewhere here so that can be taken that can be measured as well This is a 60 mm height. We have 60 mm height of the pyramid. Again, we have the base 30 mm. So, this can also be marked somewhere on any one side. We write 30 mm here. 30 mm is the base side. So 
So this is 30 mm base side. Now that we can join uh, the points in the front view, this is A dash, here is B, C, and D and O. So therefore B dash visible, D dash invisible, because we see from here B comes first, then D, therefore B dash visible, D dash invisible, C dash visible, then we have O dash, so we can join this. So this is the initial position of the problem given. Initial position is very crucial. When the initial position is wrong, everything goes wrong. So therefore we have to take utmost care in finding the initial position. So we take the square pyramid in corner position because the square pyramid needs to be held by one of its corner as per the stated problem. So we need to put initially in the corner position. Because it is held freely, we need to calculate the stage, the center of gravity also. So therefore, uh, normally the center of gravity is one fourth of the height given. So we have given 60, one fourth of the height is 50. So we take 15 mm height and we locate the center of gravity also. So we, we mark the center of gravity as G dash. We mark center of gravity as G dash. Then we find out, we, we take one corner and we join that corner with the center of gravity. Join that corner with the center of gravity by a reference line. So, Normally, when we hold this with the help of this corner, we always find the line joining the corner and the center of gravity should be kept strictly vertical. For that matter, we have to just find out uh, the triangle connecting these two points A dash and G dash. So we find A dash G dash, we match this, and when we move this through O, you will be able to get one triangle that is O dash M and A dash because it is given that the vertex will freely holding the object in with the corner the vertex should touch necessarily the XY line so therefore we need to put this projection strictly speaking the vertex should touch xy line at the same time a dash g dash m is strictly vertical so the idea is simple we take we take this m o m o m o strictly lies on xy line so it means vertex touches the ground vertex in order to satisfy the condition that the vertex touches the ground, we put O1 dash on XY and capital M on XY. Through M, we can draw one vertical line. Through M, we can draw a vertical line. And we can place the A dash M on that. So take A dash M, take A dash M, take A dash M and you place it on you place it on this so you will be getting a dash and similarly you can get g dash also so here is g dash a dash g dash a dash g dash you can just locate g1 dash also so from a dash you can put g1 dash fine so you have a1 dash you have a1 dash you can very well connect a1 dash with o1 dash 
O1 dash A1 dash is by geometry is one slant edge. So with the help of this O1 dash A1 dash, we can very well redraw this diagram very easily. Say let's say we take O1 dash and A1 dash. We have to just make one arc. You have to make one arc like this. You have to make an arc like this. And on the arc, uh, we need to just cut this base from A. From A, we can cut this. So naturally, we will be able to reproduce this point. The point is C1 dash. So we can connect A1 dash and C1 dash. We can connect A1 dash and C1 dash. And at the same time, we can connect O1 dash and C1 dash as well. So O1 dash, C1 dash can also be connected. So you can connect like this. And in a similar way, we can find out the midpoint also. Let's say C1 dash is there, you have B dash. So from here we can find out this midpoint also. So therefore you have this. The midpoint should necessarily pass through the G dash. The midpoint should necessarily pass through G dash. Because G dash is a point that is lying on the axis. G dash is a point that is lying on the axis. So therefore we just uh, this and complete the diagram, we will be able to get the complete friend view. This is the final friend view wherein the square pyramid 30 mm base and the height 60 mm is held with one corner such that the vertex is touching the xy line. The vertex is touching the xy line. So we just give a proper axis line that's very important make a proper axis line even if there is a small deviation it will be wrong so please ensure a proper axis line over there then you connect all the edges connect all the edges Yes, this is the complete friend view. So thereby we can just project this and get the top view. This is the first line and you got already one vertical line. Already one vertical line and you got the other line. Finally you have the last one C corner C line. So here is D1 dash and D1 dash. With that you can just combine the horizontal lines from the previous top view, first line, then you can take this line till the end, again you have one more line, you can just join it, now you can find out the visibility very easily, go to the extreme corner, this is one extreme corner, assume one horizontal line, assume one horizontal line there, one horizontal line. So we will go to the other extreme corner, assume another horizontal line, this is xy line. Whatever is within this, whatever is within this region is visible. So what we normally do, we assume one arrowhead pointing downward. We assume one arrowhead pointing downward. So whatever is within this limit is completely visible. So except OC everything is visible. So we write OC invisible. OC invisible. So this is not part of the answer, so it is better to erase all these around just for guidance. So erase these extra lines which we have drawn. Then we can complete the diagram very easily. Now we have A horizontal and it is A vertical, therefore we get A1. B horizontal and B vertical, we get B1. C horizontal and C vertical gives C1. D horizontal and D vertical gives D1. O1 horizontal and O1 vertical gives O1. So now that 
we know the visible edges all the edges are visible except uh, oc and we know the pattern also a to be connected with b b to be connected with c c to be connected with a similarly o is a common point you can connect oa ob oc od oa with all that we have to first connect the outer edges because we there is a possibility that we may put a dotted line for outer edge that is fatal so no outer edge is dotted so therefore we join this first outer edge so that is bc is an outer edge cd is an outer edge cd is an outer edge then od is an obvious outer edge od is an obvious outer edge you have od od so od is a dark line od is a dark line similarly ob ob is also outer edge ob is also outer edge ob is also outer edge OA is inside, so therefore OA is not outer. But when we see from here, ABCD is completely visible, so therefore we can write AB dark, AB dark, BC dark, CD dark, and AD is also dark line only. AD is also with dark line only. You can draw it dark. Then you have OA. OA is also dark according to the visibility, except OC. Everything is dark. O, OA, OA comes above these two lines only, so therefore OA is definitely a dark line. OA is definitely a dark line only. So we connect OA. OA is a dark line. We get OC is invisible, but till OA we have a dark line. So therefore, the line between A and C, the place between A and C, it should be put dotted. Once again, we go through the diagram. We have pyramid 30 mm base, 30 mm base, length axis length 60 mm, 60 mm. Held by one corner, so it is in corner position. Initial position is correct. Then we have the vertex touching the ground. Yes, in the final stage, vertex is touching the ground. After all, when we hold it, we will get center of gravity into picture. Center of gravity is one fourth of the height, so therefore, total is 60. The one fourth of the height is 15 mm. This also has to be marked clearly. So we need to mark this 15 mm also. So just to project this and uh, put 50 somewhere outside the diagram. So the concept is the when the object is held uh, by corner, the line joining corner and the center of gravity should always be kept vertical. We check this. So here we have the G1 dash. So A1 dash and G1 dash here is strictly vertical because it is within this triangle O1 dash M A1 dash. So we just mark this distance that is 15 mm. That's all.